With the addition of Copilot Agents to SharePoint, we have gained a valuable new way to use AI to make better use of our data to help get more done. This is, in my opinion, one of the best and most logical additions to come to Copilot in some time. However, there are some annoying limitations and yet to be implemented pieces of the puzzle that you should definitely know about before getting started with these new tools. So in this video, you'll learn what a Copilot agent in SharePoint is, how to use them, how to build and customize them, and how those limitations you must be aware of might impact your experience of this new product. But first, a quick introduction. My name is Nick DeCorsi. I'm the owner of Bright Ideas Agency, a digital transformation consulting company focused on helping smaller businesses get the best from AI. Check out the links below if you're interested in learning more about me or my services. If we jump into a SharePoint site, you can see that I now have a new Copilot button up in the top right of my screen. This opens a Copilot sidebar like we see in most of the Microsoft 365 apps. But there is one key difference. At the top, it tells me which Copilot, or now with the recent rebrand, which agent I'm talking to. By default, the agent that is active is the one for the whole SharePoint site. There are a number of differences between the Copilot we open by default in BizChat or even in an app like Word and this new agent experience. But the most important one to understand is scope or what the agent is seeing to answer your requests. By default, the scope of Microsoft 365 Copilot is pretty much everything you can see inside of Microsoft 365, including your files, your emails, your meeting transcripts, and similar assets that have been shared with you. This is often really useful to get a general update, like finding out what's on your agenda for the day. But when you need to reduce that scope, you've got fairly limited options. You can add files to the chat to target in on their content or add multiple different assets. But this can be a fairly cumbersome experience and too limited to scope to larger sets of data. By contrast, here in SharePoint, I have a site that is a collection of different assets related to a project called Project Falcon. And I can just chat with this agent knowing the scope is everything in the site. I don't have to select specific files as long as the storage in this site is being used as planned, then the agent will have access to everything it needs to answer questions about this project. For Microsoft 365 Copilot license users, every SharePoint site now has a Copilot experience available with the default agent being scoped to that site's data. You can chat with the content and get responses, including references, so you can check where it got its data. This on its own is a huge boost to those who have well-organized data in SharePoint and have been limited in their options for scoping Copilot to these whole data sets. In addition, I can also add additional grounding to my chat using context IQ in the sidebar. If I type a slash, I'm given access to choose from people or files. This is currently missing the meetings or emails option I get in BizChat. But for example here, I can add a person reference to my chat and find out what updates they've made to content on the site. Next, let's look at how to build an agent in SharePoint. But first, if this overview is valuable to you, please do give it a like and drop me a comment to let me know how SharePoint agents are working out for you. Also, if you want to see more like this, I'll have an overview of Agent Builder and BizChat coming up soon. Make sure you subscribe to the channel. To build an agent, you can select any resource within a document library and select Create a Copilot Agent. Your agent will be scoped to the files, folder, or document library you had selected when you clicked on that button. You can also just open the Copilot sidecar from the site homepage and use the drop down to select to build an agent. In this case, the agent will default to being scoped to the whole site. In both cases, if you select Edit, you can add to or change the scoping. Under Editing, you have three screens. Identity, where you can name your agent, set an icon and describe its purpose. Sources let you choose sites, document libraries, folders and files to be in scope of the agent. You can have up to 20 sources, which can be a mix and match of files and document libraries and folders, etc. And behavior allows you to change what users see when they first use your agent and to set starter prompts and to give the agent instructions. It is these natural language instructions that are key to customizing an agent to do the job you need. 
There's also a link to add advanced customization in Copilot Studio, but it's not live yet. We can expect that we will be able to pull these agents into Copilot Studio for deeper customization of sources and conversation flow. With each update you save into your agent, you can test it on the right to see whether the instructions you gave it are giving you the response you need. And when you exit out of this configuration screen, your agent with a .copilot extension will either be saved inside your scoped area, for example, inside the document library you selected, or if you selected the whole site, you can find it by navigating to Site Assets and then Copilots. Once you've created an agent, it appears on the list of available agents in the sidecar dropdown. However, that's just for your user. In fact, any user with edit rights to the copilot file can step into it and edit it, and then that user will see that copilot agent instead. Or you could just open a .copilot file and use that copilot agent. If you want all your users of the site to get access to it, move the .copilot file into the approved folder and then will appear as the default copilot for every user of that site, at least all the users with a Microsoft 365 copilot license. But what is the point of this beyond making it easy to select a bunch of files for scoping? Well, consider a slightly more complex example. Here I have an agent I've built to help me ensure the planning for projects is in compliance with company policies. The agent has two scoped datasets, the project documents and a set of company policies stored on another site. I then have added an extensive set of instructions to outline how I want the agent to work as a policy assistant, focused on referencing non-compliance and a set of starter prompts that help along with this process. One of the difficult things with this sort of example is the tyranny of the generic demo. I've created a fairly bland set of planning files and a fairly bland set of policies because everything I show you on screen in this video and all my videos is just demo data. So nine times out of 10, the AI could probably make a fairly good guess of potential issues to highlight without probably referring to any of the documents. So I dropped in something specific. The vendor requirements call out using a company in India for part of the project, but my vendor policy mandates adherence to US-based sourcing due to federal contract requirements. So let's see how the agent handles this. And it finds the example I gave it. It's not perfect though. Right now, scoping to document libraries works substantially less well than scoping to files, which is a lot less useful. And it generally has a lot of problems understanding the data you're feeding it consistently. In this example too, it also got the citations wrong, even though it got the right output. But imagine a scenario where these data issues are worked out and you make this not a user initiated agent, but an automated one. And each time someone updates the documents related to any of your projects, an AI assistant works in the background to ensure no compliance problems have been created. This is the kind of game changing application of AI that I think many businesses are looking for. But it's also not particularly where this technology is just yet. With so much going on in the world of productivity AI, working out how to get the best from this technology can be both time consuming and confusing. I help businesses like yours with their co-pilot adoption journey, from advisory help on the selection of the right AI tools, to technical advice with their implementation, to leadership and end user training, and support with extending its capabilities across your operations, with options like the co-pilot agents that we're looking at today. Whether you're just thinking about which AI solution to choose, or if you're already in the midst of using Copilot, I will help you to maximize your return from your investment in AI technologies. Check out the links down below and get in touch to start working with me. Overall, I think these new agent-based Copilot tools in SharePoint are gonna be really useful and make customization of the Copilot experience so easy that really anyone can start to make use of these features. However, as soon as you want to do something that's just a little bit more complex than reliably ground your prompts on a set group of files, the cracks start to show up to expose why right now this is still a preview product. There are other limitations you should know about that will impact your experience of these capabilities, depending on what types of data you're working with and how you've set up your SharePoint environment. First, there are certain file types that are specifically called out as not yet available to SharePoint agents. The big one that will probably be the most relevant to most users is OneNote notebooks, 
but images and videos are also unavailable. All of these will be coming soon, but I don't think any timeline has been shared yet. I would also add to this that an increasing area of concern for me is the interaction between Copilot and Loop components. While Copilot or Copilot agents can see .loop files stored in a SharePoint site, it cannot necessarily see .loop files or components that are referenced in the individual files. Just bear in mind that if your document utilizes a loop component stored out of your SharePoint site, for example in your OneDrive, even if everyone who uses that SharePoint site has access to it, Copilot cannot see that content. Or at least based on my testing, this is what I found. Second, your Copilot agents in SharePoint, just like the rest of Microsoft 365 Copilot, can't see SharePoint list data at all. And aligned with this limitation on lists, these tools also can't see metadata columns that you may have added to your document libraries. So this implied scope of these agents as the entire SharePoint site is a little disingenuous, as it entirely depends on how you're using SharePoints. These issues with lists and metadata, and really anything else you can pin in a SharePoint site, like a, a planner, for example, are significant for me because it potentially has the greatest level of negative impact on those organizations that have done the most to fully utilize the capabilities of SharePoint and to align with best practices Microsoft communicates. Those who are just using SharePoint as a dumping ground for files may get the most help from Copilot right now. And this seems like a perverse incentive to not consider modern data practices when setting up a new SharePoint site. It also, bizarrely, is not something Microsoft is listing explicitly as a limitation of these tools. Given the degree of integration of features like metadata columns into SharePoint, it seems like a clear limitation that should be called out in the documentation, with some level of it being addressed as to if it's something that's likely to be coming. The reality is that using the more robust tools we have in Copilot Studio, this is data we can get to with existing extensibility options but it certainly isn't straightforward or as streamlined as this core co-pilot experience in SharePoint. I'm sure the SharePoint agents is something I'll need to return to in time as this product develops. This certainly, on one level, makes a lot of sense as a product, but on another, it's impossible not to question why SharePoint agents seem to be a product somewhat out on their own versus the agents you can build from BizChat or Copilot Studio. More on that in an upcoming video. Have you tried these yet? Let me know what you think in the comments. Thanks for watching through to the end. Until the next video, bye bye.